Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Design Kitchen, where we want to provide inspiration for innovation. Um, we were just talking about business plans and basically, you know, what it takes to properly plan a business. Um, yeah, so you're in the process of doing that, right? You're kind of writing up a business plan and trying to get everything lined up and written down on paper. Yeah, so I've been going through it. Um, there's a website called Score, which I was able to download a really nice uh, business plan template. You know, I, I've done a couple in the past, but not as intricate and involved as this one. Um, so basically, this is for my Infinity Skies business. You guys have the banner in the back now, but yeah. I've been pumping away this last week or two. And, you know, it's, it's a really good learning experience because as you're doing it, you're almost like proving to yourself that your business will or will not work, you know? And I guess what I'm noticing is I'm so, um, and it's slowing me down a little bit too, because as I'm doing it, I'm coming up with so much different ideas. So I keep adding to it and adding to it. And I mean, it's like at 50 pages. I don't know if it's supposed to be that long. Um, that's how long the template was, but so that's, that's, um, that's what I've been, going through and yeah so you mentioned score i just want to kind of go go back to that a little bit so score is basically it's something it's a free resource and it has a lot of information for business owners e either beginning business owners or experienced business owners there's just there's tons of information and they're all free and it's there are a lot of even mentors and such on there that you can you can go and schedule a meeting with somebody some um, somebody who's run a business, spent a lot of years in a business and they'll talk to you and kind of guide you through some things. And you can either have just a single consultation or, or multiple consultations, depending on your kind of agreement and how things go. But so I, I think that's just a, a good resource for anybody to use. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I should have elaborated more on it too, but um, yeah, so I'm in those stages and basically you know, this all came about because an investor reached out to me um, that he was interested in, you know, my concept and what I was working on for Infinity Sky. So a couple of weeks ago, I mentioned how I had to kind of shift because that market of contract manufacturing seemed to be, um, you know, oversaturated. So I started focusing more on the business development side of it, which is basically, you um, it's almost like my top funnel where I can bring in all my customers, reach out to them. And then at, at some point they want products or whatnot, then I can transition that into the, um, you know, product development and manufacturing and design aspect of it. But I, I feel like doing this approach, my, my logic is that it widens my market to virtually any industry. Um, and then from there, it's just setting up these um you know this sales so what i was thinking it's it could literally be a company making company a company that makes companies so mm -hmm. it would be like literally you know we we spoke about how um you know i would run the business development unit as one business unit and then the prototype and design so really the way it would almost be like a company machine because i'm thinking like okay let's say we come up with an idea hey, can we do this? Get our marketing, our business development team to set up an entire sales system, automations, email marketing, ads, everything, the whole image of the company. And then we get our prototype and business development um, portion or business unit to actually manufacture that product. And then um, once we get a prototype and a design, then we transfer it to our production um, business unit, which just constantly makes and makes and builds but um not only that we are also able to kind of catch anybody so let's say we go to a company it's like hey you know blah 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 they don't want to pay ten thousand dollars for a service it's like well okay look give me like a thousand dollars nre i will set it all up but we're going to be partners on all the sales that we make so basically i would own a portion of their business um and that model could kind of follow through to the product development side too, where if let's say we design something for somebody and 
you know, we could either tell them like, hey, look, um, it's going to cost you this much, or we can do a partnership um, where, you know, they're doing some of the labor. And, and in that sense, we're almost like creating hundreds of little mini companies, um, you know, and my, my, my goal would be to be able to get all of the business development stuff completely automated so that it's almost like a fill in the blanks. Like you just put in, this is my company, this is my business, blah, blah, blah. And it almost like automatically generates the entire business plan, the customers, the email marketing. Um, you know, so if I would, if I would have that at that point, any idea that we have, we would be able to basically just type it in, right? We could have too, what I was thinking, you know, in order to help people, almost like a DoorDash for technical professional jobs, not where it's not a Fiverr, it's not like a Upwork where, you know, you, you, I don't like those that you, you basically get paid nothing because you're competing against, you know, so many different um, industries and people all over the world. Um, it really makes it challenging when you're competing with people all over the world because they're, they're from, they're from areas where they're living expenses are yeah extremely low and you just you, you can't compete you can't do yeah. something for five dollars that takes you an hour to do <laughs> yeah yeah and that's I mean and, I, and that's honestly what I'm doing that's helping me you know I have a guy I think he's in Pakistan I pay mm -hmm. him about a hundred bucks for like thousand like a thousand two thousand leads you know it's like a I don't know it's like very very um inexpensive I think it's yeah. like less than six dollars an hour or something depending on where you go but um yeah so what i'm thinking now we have this machine that will set up the whole foundation for the company then we can build virtually any product so now people would just go on to like the app for example and be like oh i need a job real quick so they just you know it's almost like they could go in there and just uh take a personality test, a skills test, and basically just be able to create jobs like as a machine. Creating jobs, you mean, are, they, are you creating, so this person who goes in there and uses your app, are they creating a business as a, for themselves or how? Is it could go both ways because basically we would hire these people to run our, our sales, our different companies that we start. So for example, mm -hmm. you know, let's say you come out with a with the knife project and then you just type in a new um, knife company in Los Angeles and then looking for three engineers and um, you know a clerical person or something and then at that point anybody could just go and apply we don't have to interview them or whatever I mean but basically make them almost like self-contained little cells where people could just go find a job and then work on our, you know, mass companies. Okay. That makes sense. It's still kind of up in the air, but it basically, it would be a program that any person could go in there and give us $10,000 or whatever it is. And it would automatically generate the entire business aspects of it. And then our prototype company can develop any product and our um, manufacturing could, you know, do it all and assemble it. We can get some warehousing if we need it, expand the manufacturing operations. But I think that that's kind of the direction where I'm trying to take this, where it's very AI um, automated. And basically we could just focus on starting like hundreds of companies that are all self-sustained with sharing resources, you know, mm -hmm. it's like a centralized, yeah sales system for all of our companies yeah and this is um is it specifically for product development manufacturing production some kind of product companies or is it any any kind of business well it, it could literally be anything because i'm thinking you know it's literally whatever comes up whatever we come up with um so you know the i guess the beauty of it is that it would be basically taking what like if I were to get hired at a company this, this is the way I, I kind of came about it if I were to get hired at a company right like the first month I have to basically like learn all the customers all the company get to know the competition and things like that 
where if this app using AI, because for example, I got approached by a company who sells a service of lead scrubbing uh, powered by AI, instead of having to hire my guy in Pakistan, now I can hire um, this company to use AI to scrub the internet. Well, who says I can't develop that? So if I had yeah. some kind of app for AI, obviously I'm not a computer um, engineer, but if I had some kind of app that can basically go in there, you know, scan the, and there's a lot of services like Owler and things like that, but something that, that would be able to scrub the entire internet, get to know like your competition, your keywords, like everything in, in one suite package. Um, I think that would be incredible because, you know, I was reading and this big thing too is like companies, um, who are completely digital now to manufacture things where you can just upload your design for anything from sheet metal to 3D printing or anything. And you get like an instant quote and um, you know, they just prints out and ships. So I'm like this whole internet and technology is making things so um, robust that we can cut so many processes and man hours out of the, the process of building a company and a business. Yeah. So that's, um, that's kind of what I've been thinking about as a result to this business plan. And, you know, it helps. So once I'm done with it, um, I'm planning on submitting it to the investor, um, you know, with hopes that I don't think I need too much startup and operational cost, but I want more of the guidance and connections. Like they have like, call centers in the Philippines, you know, so if I can use all of those resources, mm -hmm. um, that would be a, you know, a cool type of partnership. Um, so I still need to figure out what would be the next uh, steps and where it's all going. Okay. Yeah. Well, I can see now why it's 50 pages long, that <laughs> <laughs> the business plan, it, get, it gets pretty long after. Uh, yeah. I mean, I have with it, that much stuff. Yeah. It's like tons. It's I printed yeah. it, uh, you know, charts, things, org charts, competitors. I mean, it's 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 really great at product and development, um, product and services. You have to create a marketing plan with the market research, barriers to entry, you know, SWOT analysis um competitor analysis like your top three competitors um i mean i put in everything all the marketing channels cold calling social media print marketing um uh, the pricing structure you know it's all based on like a location you know so that's and that's only like half of it there's like tons <laughs> and this is all just a template off score yeah it's a template but you know there's so much more to it that once you start working on it whatever idea you had originally you're like man i was thinking too small and now you're like oh i could do this or i could do this and it asks you different questions and things like that that um kind of get you to to look at things differently okay have you have you ever had to work on a business plan or anything uh, I did a small one for my business, but it's a, a, a pretty basic short plan. And I don't remember where where I got a template from. I, I did get a template from somewhere and, uh, and I filled it out. And that was what the banks required and mm. um, to just to you know, get things started there. So not 50 pages, I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, this is a, this is a different one because the way the way I'm I mean, I'm I'm looking at this as you know something that i'd like to have it almost like self running so i'm i'm putting as much thought and just trying to take everything that i can from like mm -hmm. jay samit and like uh grant cardone and every single industry and thing that i've studied like i really want to impress this um this person, right? Because I mean, obviously, let's say 
whatever it doesn't happen with my business but that's another connection that maybe in the future it's like hey that guy was sharp i want to work with him or something yeah um yeah. so that's that's part of it too you know just getting everything down on paper all your thoughts every every potential you know all your ideas and everything that way it just kind of clarifies it for yourself and then kind of potentially yeah. brings out more ideas too yeah. exactly and, you know, the cool part of it, too, is that it's literally just your own checklist, because as soon as I print that out, I'm literally just going to go cross each one off as I'm doing it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really, I mean, to me, every single business should have a pretty in-depth business plan. Um, and, you know, one thing that I, that I feel a lot of businesses don't focus on is pivoting and growing. Um and uh, scaling, I meant scale, scaling yeah. and pivoting into horizontal and vertical markets. Mm -hmm. um, so as long I, as you have the capacity to do it, if you're if you're stretching beyond your capacity, then it it can be have a negative impact on your business. Yeah, and and that's and that's what you know services like Infinity Skies of my company would be uh, doing for those specifically for those situations where. I feel a lot of business owners are so stuck in their their um, field and they're so, you know, focused on their day to day production that they never think about the five, 10 year plan. Um, they never think about scaling. Um, you know, like I was I reached out to one of my friends that has a meal prep company and I'm thinking like, well, you know, if I had a meal prep company, I would reach out to like every single corporation and be like hey you know can we subs subscribe you guys to like a weekly subscription for your employees i would reach out to which i'm pretty sure they do like firemen and and cops and things like that but you know i would be and and again you know they might be doing everything but it's kind of like looking at it from an outsider's um point of view where you're not locked into that um set of of uh of thinking that, that you've been in your whole life in that yeah. industry. Yeah, that could definitely bring in a lot of um, just useful information because like from having a different perspective from somebody from a different industry who doesn't necessarily understand it and maybe couldn't even implement it on their own, but they say something, they have some idea that then leads to the, the owner, you know, executing on it and you know, actually having the skills and the knowledge to, to actually execute. But whereas you might just give him an idea and then he has to go out and learn, decide how to do that, how to actually accomplish that. Yeah. So, so that's what I want to do at the different levels of, of uh, pricing. Right. So I can be where it's like, here's a generic plan, you know, here's like a custom one. This is everything I would do, but I'm not going to do it for you. And then there's like the full package where it's like, look, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to do like a month's work of, of, of like, if you hire a new employee, basically, I'm going to do everything they did and implement all the systems and train your people. And all you have to do is just pay me this 10 grand and um, I'll get it done in like a week, a month's worth of work. And I have my lead generation people. I have my cold calling people. So basically I can support the whole way through to grow your business. Yeah. And then if you wanted to add any products, um, we can always partner on it and I will help you develop your product at a discounted rate for percent share, blah, blah, blah. You know, I think th this hits on a very um, like niche market where there's like a need that people don't know there's a need. Yeah okay and speaking of manufacturing i was i've been listening to a book somebody recommended a book to me mm -hmm. and have you ever heard uh the book called the goal by eliyahu uh no. let me see uh, what was his what was his last name should and if you're interested in manufacturing and manufacturing processes mm -hmm. i'm listening to it on audible let's see where is it Eliyahu Goldrat and Jeff Cox. So, oh, I think I heard the Cox guy. This is yeah. The book's name is The Goal. So it's it it is um. 
it, it's kind of an, it, it, I really like how he explains it and breaks it down. Mm-hmm. And because some, you know, some books where they're about manufacturing or about business or something like that, they're, they're more like kind of textbook. They're just full of information and you have to think about it to try to, or you have to, re- you can only read so much at a time. And it, even if it's super interesting, but it, it can be kind of dry. This one is not like that. So he break, he he turns it into a story mm-hmm. and the story has like, okay, what's the moral to the story? At each like kind of little section of it, every lesson is has its own little story behind it. So it, it was really cool. So you're talking about just bringing in more products and stuff like that. And I was just thinking about that book because creating products, creating widgets, mm-hmm. and it, you can apply it to any... I mean, it doesn't need to be a manufacturing business, but that's really kind of that's a big part of where it's what it's for. But you can you can apply it to different things. Mm-hmm. Gotcha, gotcha. So it's about creating products or widgets. Basically, it was just about um, the manufacturing process and how to make things really efficient. And the goal being the goal of any business mm-hmm. is to make money. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's just about making it's it's like a um, a process of efficiency. Mm, oh, I'm all about that. Okay, yeah. that reminds me of like a couple books or like getting things done where it's like personal mm-hmm. efficiency. Yeah. Gotcha. Cool. Yeah, I'm gonna check that out. Have you worked on any of your um? Have you worked on any of your designs? Yeah, I've been working on the project uh, lately. Yes, yesterday I got some pretty good progress done. I've been three D printing some pieces, so got a few more pieces. I'm gonna I, I printed some pieces, but I'm redesigning again for specifically for three D printing. I'm gonna make so with the nice thing about printing is you can add locating features on parts. So like I'm adding holes and pins that are built into the pieces, so that way because I was as I was gluing the other pieces together, I was like trying to line them up for it correctly but then i realized no i can just add these locating features to it yeah yeah and that's what i'm working on now so that way next time when I, i'm going to print these things up and i'll just add a dab of glue to it and they'll click right together the, the locations will be perfect so value added engineering <laughs> <laughs> so i'll have to make a different version for as being the machined part machine versus 3d printed but mm-hmm. there w- won't be a lot of major changes but it's um there is design for manufacturer. That's the part of design for manufacturer is designing for the specific process that is you're going to be using. So 3D, in this case, 3D printing. And then next I'll be doing machining. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Did you have a sample of it or anything? So I've got, let's see if you can see it. So you can see that it's, there's actually three pieces. You see that there's a small ridge right there in the middle. Mm-hmm. So it has, uh, this each of the these faces is like a half and then it has a frame in the middle which leaves that kind of hollow space in the middle gotcha so and that'll be so that's kind of just the the outside the profile of it and that's going to be like a utility knife or are you putting like yeah. a full-on yeah exactly yeah utility utility gotcha I think you were mentioning like a modular where you could put like a utility knife feature and then pop it out and put like a um, regular knife or you scrap that. It's just going to be, no, it'll just be just utility. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's cool though. Cause um, yeah. What about the mini exacto knife? Yeah. That one I haven't worked on. I just work just focus on one at a time. Uh, but that's I cool. haven't, haven't done that one at all. I do not have tons of it. I did see that I, I sent you a picture of it and it kind of made me re readdress my old um, concept of the modular backpack. Mm-hmm. I had mentioned um, in a previous episode where it would be like a backpack with the built-in tent and different things, an umbrella that could pop up or like a bench to mm-hmm. sit on. So I, I recently, I saw this, it was like a GoFundMe or something, but they didn't, um, they ended up canceling the project, but it was a tent backpack, which looked horrible. I mean, it was ugly, <laughs> but the cool part about it is that the actual backpack itself would unfold. So 
it's like if you're wearing if this is the backpack right and like these are like the straps or whatever it's like the dumbest backpack ever these are like the straps so basically you would put the backpack down and unfold it with the zipper and then the whole lining of the backpack was the tent material so you're basically it's almost like you have like your little tent within your backpack it's hard to show in this with this paper but um you know i thought that was cool because now i can take the concept of it right just do that with the whole liner being the tent but do it the way i wanted to with like a cool frame and like a built-in stand and table an umbrella so now not only it's like a full camping experience with the built-in like uh you know little table and and or what would i say like a chair with an umbrella and like uh it could have just the different modular things that attach to it so yeah you know i think that i i, I mean i'm still for that modular backpack idea i still think um you know, that would be a product that I would want to run maybe through the company at some point through my, through the product prototype and, um, you know, design and prototype side. Of yeah. It. So, okay. I mean, even if we made like one prototype marketed it and as soon as as we got an order, we just make them as they, as they go. Um, you know, there's just figuring out I'm sure you can work it out with like a local shop to just kind of seamstress the whole tent material and the zippers and everything. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty confident that we'd be able to get like two or three just samples for like media and all that. And then if we sell one, we just sell one and make another one to replenish it with no inventory or anything. Um, but I think that's an example of like the model of this company making company company making company yeah <laughs> so you just put in all the information modular backpack it sets up your website your you know your leads your target audiences like every basically everything in the business plan it even it could even print out a business plan for you popular auto populate um you know and i know that this is this could um basically work because there's parts of it already being done, but not the whole, the whole thing. Um, yeah, so you're just taking existing things and putting them together into one. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, once that goes, you have like two or three. I mean, I could literally keep them in my office right here and, mm -hmm. and um, sell them as, as they build, you know, with the goal would be to get an office location with, you know, people then if you need people that just go on that app and it's like oh i'll take the job or i'll take this job or i'll take this yeah. job. it's almost like uh yeah i mean i think that, that that would be cool you know and like still i'm still figuring out how the job thing i would want it like a door dash job but for, for professional jobs where you can wake up one day and be like you know what i i want to work this week only so then you just go on and look for like a week contract or something either one of our companies or like somebody else's company that would partner with that. And, you know, being able to, I think that that would be helpful for like entrepreneurs, for example, that it's like, Oh, I want to work like two weeks and then focus on my business the other two weeks or just people that are in between jobs and, and different things. You know, I just a way to kind of play even out that, that job market where, yeah. You know, so companies don't feel so um, superior when 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 they bring you in for their interview. It's like, oh, you forgot to you know screw up my shoes. Oh, my bad. You have to go and like clean their shoes before you sit down. <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't done that in an interview interview yet, but. <laughs> <clears throat> well, I mean, that's just. I mean, to me, it just it feels um, humiliating to do an interview. Um, okay. at certain companies, right? Because some companies, right, they're right off the bat, they recognize like, okay, you have the skill set, you're good, like we want you to work with us. And they're almost like trying to sell you and making you feel welcome. Mm -hmm. but there's like other ones where you go in there and they're like penny pinching their like money. They're like, we're gonna pay you this money, but we gotta make sure that you're gonna you're gonna be able to provide, 
you know, they're like, like to me, that's, that's already a bad place to be at as a company to begin with, like to work for them. Um, like I had, I guess the best way I could explain it, I had this company take me through like three interviews, wasted my time just to tell me at the end that, you know, they picked somebody else where I've been to companies where I just jumped on the phone and they're like, oh yeah, you're good. We like you, you know, come in like, so it, it's just so completely different. Um, so that's, that's kind of why I find them humiliating. Cause I'm like, I literally have my own company doing business development, but I'm going to go apply for a job just so I can, um, you know, make extra cash to support uh, my business type of thing, you know? Yeah. Um, so I guess that's, that's, uh, that's my take on, on interviews. I'm kind of, I mean, I'm kind of anti working a job and all that stuff. I mean, it's like, yeah. um, you know, I think entrepreneurship should be accessible to everybody um, and just easier, you know, education and be encouraged more for people. And, yeah. you know, yeah. I feel like we're seeing that now with the huge, uh, shift in people leaving their jobs last september and october it's like yeah a million oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah that to me i feel like there should be a shift and something is moving in a certain direction for the business climate especially because i mean mm -hmm. like i'm noticing now companies are like bumping up their salaries because people aren't even willing to take those jobs without um the pay raise so it's like you know, some companies are still acting kind of petty about bringing in employees, but it's like, well, you guys, there's a shortage of uh, of workers or people choosing not to work. How are you still going to treat your candidates like that? Yeah. Um, so that that's why I am not a huge fan of interviews or anything like that. Yeah. Cool. Um, Oh, you were, actually, I just heard the babies crying for me. <laughs> All right. Well, it was a great talk. You know, we went over some cool stuff, business plans, gave people some resources on on what to do. Um, if they're starting their own business, SCORE. I think it's SCORE.org or something like that. That's a yeah, I think SCORE. If you look up SCORE, S-C-O-R-E, um, that's definitely check it out. There's, there's a, a lifetime supply of information on there yeah you never run out there's webinars i used to go to there they would have even like community events where you would go and they would have like a marketing guy talk about mm -hmm. marketing and things like that that would actually be a cool thing for me to go in there and do yeah oh That's yeah fun. because you have local representatives local people um for each score chapter for for every local area so everybody should have one somewhere well, near them i'm saying more of they used to have uh speakers come in mm -hmm. uh, so it's like, as I am, because I mean, it makes me laugh because my, my business is literally a business to build a business. <laughs> so yeah. my service would be going to a business and basically doing everything in the business plan, plus the stuff that they don't know about, plus, you know, all the stuff that I've you know, come in and consulting with. So I'm saying, you know, I, I could probably go in there and speak to help other people that are trying to grow their businesses um, in different areas. Yeah. I guess really limiting is like, but where's your revenue? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll be like, well, I mean, I got like half a million in, um, in quotations, but yeah. none of it's converted yet. So it's literally just- <laughs> Still working on it. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I mean, imagine all of that converted. I would be like, oh, yeah, I'm not working for like the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for you know joining us on this episode. And uh, don't forget to check out designkitchen.org um, and infinitysks.com. I know it's Infinity Skies, but it's Infinity SKS. And um, we'll talk to you guys next week. All right.